Welcome to this installment of Creative Cabin Fever. On today's show, I have Kigo from Dab Diablo DC. Now, how I met this guy is I announced that I was going to do the September 26th birthday party for myself as my first Viking party. And he literally messaged me straight away going, I'd love to play at your birthday. And I was like, oh, this guy sounds cool. So, Kigo, introduce yourself. Hello, uh, I'm Kigo. I'm the guitar player of some people's 14th favorite band, Diablo DC. Um, we are uh, just coming off the launch of our, our video for our second song, The Losing Game. And uh, yeah, we are all locked down, working through Zoom and various other communication methods. And I'm not making a hostage video here. I just haven't put the curtains up yet. So just in case anyone is worried about me, uh, I am not uh currently a hostage that may change over the next few months it is hard to gauge in this current climate when anyone is going to be in a hostage situation or not but i can guarantee to anyone at home that is considering getting on to me about creative cabin fever i don't actually keep anyone hostage for these interviews they're all done by uh, will and choice and i really really like the natural run of things so thank you so much for putting everyone at ease that was considering contacting viking promotions about one such interview absolutely well uh in the notes before the call you told me to agree with everything you say so uh i agree do you have that newspaper ready uh, I have an old, co I have a copy of Woman's Way magazine here to use for the picture. So we've nothing to prove the date and time. This could be any time, any place. Time is non-existent during lockdown. Uh, one wink means send help. Two winks means I'm okay. <laughs> sorry, what, what are we doing here? Okay, sorry. It's all good. We're having fun and all the interviews are completely individualistic to each person I'm interviewing and I'm loving that. There's not been two interviews the same. It's all about meeting people and their own personal magic and that's what I want these interviews to be. So if we're going to have a mess for the whole interview, we're going to have a mess for the whole interview because that will show everyone who you are. So that's good by me, Kigo. Mypersonalmagic.com forward slash Kigo. <laughs> You guys obviously released the video recently. I got to see a premiere of the premiere on Demar's Entertainment, and that was brilliant. And then I got to see the live stream on YouTube. So talk us through that and what it's like having the Losing Game released. Yeah, it's, it's actually the first song that Ray, the, the singer and myself, we wrote. The first time we met, we wrote this song. And uh, it just kind of hit at the one time. The, the caffeine intake was level between the two of us, and we just hit it straight away. And we've loved the song since we wrote it. And we, we kind of, um, we were trying to figure out, we released a video for Wreckage to Riches there in January, um, which kind of people seem to like. Uh, just a video about, you know, strong women, which frighten everyone. And, um, and so we wanted to go in a different direction. So we kind of wanted um, the relationship aspect of the song to, to come through in the video. Uh, and then Ray came up with the idea of uh, kind of Japanese anime stuff. I, I have no idea about it, but I know it looks cool, but I don't know how it works. And so we, we found, a, found a guy who made uh, an anime video that went, sat with the song. Uh, and as soon as we saw it, we were like, Jesus, this is brilliant. And then we kind of go, how do we get it to people? How do we make people feel important enough to watch it? So we found the premiere thing on, on, uh, on YouTube where we can have a natter with people while they're watching it. Um, and that was, that was brilliant. And the whole thing, the whole idea of... of um, uh, the video is a relationship between two people. One person is deaf. They, they can't communicate with each other. A lot of things happening in life. And then eventually we figured it all out, uh, which is kind of how I took the song. Ray wrote it from a different different aspect, which is great because even though the music and the, and the song sits together really well, we both take it completely different ways. Uh, so when, when I'm playing it, it sounds in my head like a, you know nearly a love song, trying to figure things out. Whereas Ray wrote it from a dark place and it all kind of works together. So, uh, so the video is up there on, on our YouTube channel, Diablo DC. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool little piece of work. It is a really cool piece of work. I'm a big anime fan and I love all things Japanese. So when I saw it, I was like, ooh, this adds an extra cool dimension to that song that's already deadly. So I was delighted. That's perfect. Look, that song is already deadly. That's actually a quote we're going to steal and use from now on. So even before I saw the video, the song was deadly. Rebecca from Viking. 
<laughs> Absolutely. What are you guys finding about releasing songs or pieces of work in this bizarro sphere that we're currently living in? How do you feel about that as a band? Well, it's it's trying to trying to improvise. People are um, people are stuck indoors. People are trying to figure things out. Trying to do rehearsals through Zoom and all that. And the, our initial plan at the start of the year was to release two songs every quarter. So we had a load of stuff. We have a load of stuff recorded, uh, and the idea was to build this throughout the year in an album at Christmas. Uh, and obviously COVID hit, so we've got to we've got to adapt to it. So um, we we kind of slowed down a little bit on the release of music uh, and kind of tried to tried to make the video. Not that we didn't try on wreckage, but to try and put a bit more effort into the visuals. Um, you know, we're not we're not the, we're not the most attractive of people in a band, so we need we need good videos. Um, so so we kind of spent a lot of time working on losing game and, and kind of tightening the music up and then tightening the video up. And I think that's what we'll do going forward. Instead of doing two every quarter, I think we'll kind of do one every few months just to, just to try and get people interested. The feedback has been brilliant to the video. Um, and I think we'll kind of try and do something completely different again in the next video. It's, um, we kind of went from a, a party video for, for wreckage into the anime relationship kind of thing with, with losing game. Uh, and then our next one could be, we've, we've no idea where it's going to go. And that's amazing. I'm loving seeing how like innovative everyone's been and how reinventive everyone's been. But that's the one thing we can be sure of. No one in the artistic world is going to be taking this timeline down. Like we're creative forces for a reason, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's just the, the, the things you miss, you know, yourself. Everybody knows that you miss that human interaction when you're when you when you discover a happy accident in a jam room or whatever, and someone stops and goes, "Here, play that again. Try that again. I've got something that'll go on top." Of that. I kind of miss that kind of thing, uh, and the worry as the very average guitar player is that you lose your little tricks that you would use because you're playing. Pardon the phrase, uh, you're playing with yourself in your room uh, as opposed to playing with a lot of other people in a room. Um, you know what I mean? And that's kind of, uh, you kind of lose the how to interact with people. But no, we're doing all right. We're keeping it, it's, it's mostly a WhatsApp video relationship we're having at the moment, sending ideas to and, to and forth. And uh, yeah, we should, you know what I mean? We've got another another album written through the through the pandemic. Uh, oh, that's a great name for the album. I have to remember that. Uh, that's great. Patent pending, no one can steal it. Um, so yeah, Through the Pandemic by Diablo DC. Right, that sounds savage, sorry. Uh, too much coffee. So yeah, we're, we're gonna hit the ground running and then whenever we're allowed, uh, get in the same room, I think it's phase three or something, we're allowed to uh, play music together. So, you know, it'll be, it'll, be like, uh, it'll be like Jack and Rose in that Titanic film, just without all the feelings and more. Yeah, no, it's really exciting and everyone's really excited to be able to reunite. Cause you're right, like people are using things like, um, ooh, loads of different apps that you can send stuff on you know i can't think of the name right now because my brain has gone dead but that's okay and zoom obviously is great for stuff like this and i'm having loads of like bro nights once a week i meet up with my boys and they drink cans while i watch them drinking my water judgingly and it's great we're bonding super strong and it's brilliant but for a band that energy does come to play you're right being in your room playing by yourself it, it has its perks but it's not the same mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it, we're kind of we're improvising pretty well, like everyone is. It's I think it's the creative side of things. The kind of how do we get into people's ears? Um, that's the, where the, the kind of people are getting really creative. Whether they're doing Zoom gigs or uh, they're, people are starting to do those drive-in gigs now, um, which is a great idea. Uh, even the guys in comedy, uh, my, my comedy friends, they're starting to do um, like gigs for people, but in a car park, so everything's spaced out. It's really, really good stuff. So I, I, people are worried about getting into venues again, but I think we will improvise, adapt and overcome and do things like that. Uh, you know, you, the big guys are going to do it, but the small scale guys like those, you know, we'll be able to figure that out as well. You know, uh, we'll, we're not that far away from getting everyone together, just away from each other. Yeah, it's like you're going through town at the moment and you really want to hug your friends, but you know you can't. And then some of your friends will hug you and then you feel like they really shouldn't be. And then it's, it's just such a weird time. It's just such a weird time. Like, and we're all adjusting and it's just going to take a while. But yeah, you're right. We're going to figure this out. Yeah, I think, I think we're just, we're learning. 
who we are really. Uh, people who don't like other people are having a great time. People who miss other people are going to appreciate them more when they meet them again. And, and you know, it's, that's kind of the, where we're at at the moment. And it's just, the worry is that people are going to get silly and start licking each other again. And then we're going to be back to square one. So uh, everyone listening, stop licking strangers. Uh, we can't go back to our old ways. Um, get permission first and, and then lick. you know yourselves. Yes. Licking strangers is never okay without permission. Not, not anymore. Not anymore. No. Call me old fashioned. In the supermarket and some randomer comes up behind me and starts licking the <laughs> earlobe, I'd be like, Kigo told you not to be doing that. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah. The Q and lead will just lick in the back of people's necks. You know, you can't do that anymore. So I've been asking a lot of musicians who they've been listening to in lockdown, because for me, a big part of my journey is that I've been able to lose myself in music again like I could when I was a teenager, and I've missed that. I didn't realize how much I missed it, but it turns out I missed it a lot. Who have you been losing yourself to, Kilo? You see, my, my problem with, me, with, with my, how I attack music is it's a bit like my Chinese food order. It very rarely changes. Um, so I've been listening fairly non-stop to uh, Turn, the Irish band. Um, so they, I discovered them on my 19th birthday when they supported the Frames in Vicker Street. A lot of my mates brought me in um, to see the Frames for the first time. And uh, Turn came on first and just blew my face off. Uh, so Turn, a lot of the time I, I'm doing that. Um, I'm losing myself in the old stuff like my... I grew I was lucky to have good music in my house growing up. So a lot of Queen, a lot of Elton John. Um, my my ma was mad into the ABBA, uh, which is just a few, few gins in you, a few stronger drinks into you, and ABBA is sure a different level. That's proper pop music. Uh, but then, you know, I'm, I'm a, I, you know, the, the mid 90s, late 90s was when I, I became a teenager and that was my music. So I keep going back to the old stuff, early Metallica, Soundgarden, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's kind of where I go to. And then I just get lost in music documentaries as well. So like last night I watched uh, Def Leppard behind the music. Absolutely bananas, those lads. Fantastic. So I'm, I'm, I'm just any kind of music I'm eating up. And that's great. Like obviously I'm on a different scale now because it's part of my job to discover Irish and to really throw myself into that. So I've been just losing myself in material that I didn't even know was out there. And because of the lockdown, I've been able to do that. But normally I'd be a grunge head. Like my favorite band of all time is Bush, like, which is neo grunge, you know? But I saw them when I was 16. I fell in love with Gavin Rosdale when I was 12. I fell in love with Dave Navarro when I was 13. They're actually my secret boyfriends. They don't know it yet. And we kind of have this like, open relationship thing going for the last 24 years or so and I, I'm cool with that but yeah it's interesting because I would have been the same as you I would have found it hard to to listen to new music but now I've no, I've no choice and I'm loving it absolutely it's, it's mad that you mentioned Bush that was my first gig in the SFX that was my first ever gig was Bush yeah I had to sneak into that one the Razorblade suitcase tour so yeah they're 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 up there as well um, he's a bit mad now, but uh, I don't have an open relationship with, with Gav. Um, we kind of, we, we parted ways uh, years ago. He, he met some blonde lady, I don't know, and had kids with her. So I kind of, I, I can't compete with that. You know what I mean? And now he has a new Brazilian girlfriend who's also a supermodel and he mostly does gigs from his sitting room with really nice art in the background and fancy shirts. He does Q&As once a week, so I'm waiting for the opportunity to ask him, will he actually come on my show? I've actually sent 17 emails trying to get an interview with Gavin Rosdale, and that is not a joke. Well, Gav, we know you're listening. Uh, jump in uh, next week and... Uh... I don't know. I'm sure there's some Brazilian tie in there. I don't know. That's, that's between you guys. Yeah, look, we'll figure it out. The day will come where I will meet Gavin Rosdale and we will just talk for hours about things such as the wisdoms he has shared, like sometimes success is the loudest weapon or I don't care that nobody in England is listening to me because I'm a big deal in America. So QI, it's not really my thing, you know, really yeah. interesting character, really positive as well. You know, I think, yeah, I think when you're that rich, you kind of go a bit crazy. Uh, I think, I think he, he can be summed up in the, 
the mortal words uh, of the chorus of uh, number one hit swallowed uh, swallowed hollowed you can't just you don't you, you you're either born with genius like that or you, you just don't have it that is it we're in agreement on Gavin Ross and I think that's perfect. <laughs> I think that's perfect. I think we are now friends for life. So good job, Diego. <laughs> so I noticed a lot from your Instagram that you were big into working out and keeping active and keeping fit. So talk me, talk to us or me through what that's like for you on a personal level and how that might be helping you in lockdown. Absolutely. It's all about keeping the head clear, being in a good mood when you hit that front door, because um, it's not easy for anyone. And I, um, it, you know, in a former life, I used to be a pro wrestler. Uh, and then now I kind of, um, Thai boxing is my thing, um, just to keep the, keep the body moving. I'm getting a bit older now, but uh, just trying to keep the, keep the brain box clear so that, you know, I'm in as good, good a mood as I can be. You know, we're all working, we're all moving, we're all paying bills and putting up with people and all that sort of stuff. So, it's all about keeping, keeping, keeping the blood moving. Basically, that's that's the reason why I do it. So I try and do something every day. Um, you know, no one really likes running. Don't trust anyone who, who likes marathon running because what are they running from? Where are they running to? It it doesn't make any sense. You're running from your own fears and insecurities. So stop running that far, unless it's for a bus or a chipper that's closing. There's no real reason to run 27 miles. I'm in agreement with that. I'm more of a yoga head. I walk a lot. I walk to music. I like to take in the scenery and the nature. I like to enjoy the wind on my face. I like to see what's going on without seeing anything. It's actually like I have these weird blinders on at all times. You could be waving at me across the street and I will not see you if my headphones are on. Yoga is frightening because I'm worried that if I get into certain positions, there's air that's been in, that, in my body since 1983. So I'm just worried that if that leaves dead body with an audience around me it might cause a problem luckily <clears throat> the pandemic has taken care of that because you're doing all your yoga <laughs> <What> you do? <clears throat> so it's the same as uh, performing in your bedroom on your own right now well i tell you what before the end of this i'll do uh, a downward dog in the background um, and, we'll, and that we'll will go with the waving cat in the background here downward dog and waving cat sounds like a, a film i accidentally started in college That may or may not be true. I don't know. I don't know either, but we keep going back to this uh, <laughs> on camera and off camera. So it's a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> so before you were in college doing funny movies that may or may not be true, what was the first song you fell in love with, Kigo? Oh, my goodness. Something just came out when I was there. Uh, <laughs> uh, wow. Well, that was unexpected. Um, uh, let me think. Well, my first my first memory is uh, is the White Album by the Beatles on record, just being played nonstop. Um, yeah, as I said, be, uh, very lucky to have good music in the house because a lot of kids don't have good music. It's awful. So yeah, it was a lot of Queen, a lot of Belton John on the Muppet Show back in the day. Um, you know, far too young to, to remember that. Um, so yeah, Elton John was on the Muppet Show nearly every other week, and so that's probably my big memory. Crocodile Rock. Brilliant. Sometimes with a few gins on me, I'll sing it out the window. Gin is, is a beautiful drink. I do miss gin. I do. Has there <laughs> been any self-discoveries while you've been in lockdown? It's a bit too early to talk about my self-discoveries. It's not the watershed, you know what I mean? Where are we going with this? Were you on my website earlier on? I was. And oh. I looked up all the pro surf, surf uh, wrestler thing. I pro surf for now. Look at me. Look at me. See you. Right? And I saw that video from back in college, and now I'm all flustered. Wow. Yeah. You're, so you're the one person who's bought it. Yeah. I thought it was only on VHS, but no, apparently you can download it now. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what have I discovered? Uh, well, I actually discovered the D chord on the guitar. Um, I, I, I don't know any of the chords. I just put my fingers in places to make noise. Uh, I think that's... I think that's got to go on a t-shirt, I think. I think that's the only way forward. Um, yeah. Merchandise going forward. 
Oh, buy my T-shirt. It says putting my fingers on places to make noise. Wow. Um, yeah, so this is this is how you uh, ruin interviews by talking too much about yourself. I think this is how we win. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you're laughing at me, uh, go see my band. Um, what have I learned? I, I've tried to be calm. Uh, I've tried to, tried to be a bit more zen, even though on a Monday and a Tuesday, I'm un-zen, reverse zen. Um, just through the start of the working week. But then as, as we get closer to Friday, which I believe you told me today is Friday, time has lost all meaning, which is great news. Um, and so yeah, trying to be trying to be calm, trying to be zen, trying to trying to be chilled out. But uh, you know, sometimes the world is, uh, you need to get a bit angry sometimes. So trying to be calm, that's long answer short. No, and that's a great answer. Now, because you mentioned paying for videos and that you mentioned that you really like Banned documentaries, right? I just remembered a banned documentary that you may or may not have seen that you will have to pay for, unfortunately. Life After Death From Above. Death From Above are my third favorite band of all time. And I only got to watch that documentary two months ago while I was just doing a lot of research on interviews and stuff. And I would highly recommend that documentary to anyone out there. With this pen, I just wrote that down. <clears throat> And the great thing about that documentary is it shows you the rise and fall of a band. So Death From Above got almost massive and then they broke up for 10 years and then they got back together. And it tells you about that story and what it's like to be a band that's just about to break it and then you have this big massive fight. Awesome. They are a beautiful band. Actually, and you've just reminded me, the one documentary that I keep watching on repeat is the uh, ZZ Top little old band from Texas, absolute heroes. Went to see them in Dublin a couple of years ago and it was one of the best gigs ever. Oh my God. And did you see that, a band called Death documentary? I'm taking this pen and I'm gonna write that one down as well. So like that's about a punk band in Detroit. And it's freaking incredible. So basically, this happens at the beginning, so you'll know it's after happening. It's not like I'm giving anything away. But one of their kids finds these old demos in the attic, and all of a sudden, this band is rediscovered. And they were like founding members in a movement. And it's freaking unbelievable, because Detroit at the time was really not about that. And then, oh, oh, you're going to love it. Oh, you're going to love it. You better tell me how you get on with those documentaries, actually, because now I'm actually invested in your discovery of, 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 of these documentaries. I will. Uh, I, think, I think we need to be uh, thankful that it was the demos they discovered in the attic because everyone has dodgy shit in the attic. So it could have been anything. They could have been the first people who used to Velcro each other to walls and stuff, you know, so at least the music good. You just reminded me my roof is coming off on Monday and now I have to go up to the attic and sort that out. So thank you. All part of the service. Absolutely. Get that kinky shit out of the attic before someone moves. You don't need to. I mean, it's a flat roof. There's not much I can hide up there. But with my filleting skills and determination in life, you would be surprised. You'll be surprised what I get away with. And um, yeah. So this has been a great interview. Is there anything you'd like to add before we stop recording and go back to casual chats? Yeah, okay. Uh, no, I just mainly I hope everybody is well. I hope everyone is safe and well and getting on with life. Uh, if you have time and space within your ears to put us in there, uh, search for Dabro DC everywhere. Uh, I think we're even on, what's this weird one? Tidal, which I thought was a water movement, but apparently it's a streaming service as well. My best friend, Keith, <clears throat> He is obsessed with Tidal. He won't stop talking about Tidal. Seemingly like it belongs to like JC or something or Jay-Z or something. Seemingly it's a big deal. And he found out about it because there's these big wigs over in like, I don't know, Iceland or somewhere that are running this company. And it's like HD music and it's better than Spotify, according to him. But I don't know. Well, his real name is Jay Z, not Jay Z, silly Americans. Uh, no, we actually we love all the Americans, so they just can't say their word letters correctly. And Keith, listen, while you're on the title, whatever it's called, go find us, Dablo DC.
He Put doesn't watch my interviews. Oh, well then, feck off, Keith. Never liked you. He does not watch my interviews. Prick Keith, that's what we call him by his back. He's my number one beardo. I'd be lost without him, but he does not watch my interviews. This is a sure thing. Okay, Keith, we don't know what we feel about you. Uh, you're important, but still a bit of a prick. <laughs> Kigo, it's been a pleasure. I'm going to stop recording now. I've had the best crack. Absolutely oh. beautiful. Oh, shit. This has more personality than I do, and it shows you how big my actual head is. When you've got a waving cat, uh, and I've got a bobble head. I think this is the only way we can end our call today. Happy Bank Holiday weekend, everybody. Stay safe. The Apple of DC. Put us in you. Absolutely do check them out, though, because I wasn't messing earlier when I said their song was great. Like, I did actually genuinely believe their song was great. Like, oh, none yeah, of the I... fans pay me for this stuff either. I'd like to point out that I do all this because I love the industry. Absolutely. Well, and I, I know sarcasm when I hear it, and you hit it very well there. So I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I guess my cat is, 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 is stroking itself. So it's similar to the playing guitar by yourself in the bedroom comment earlier and all the other inappropriate comments that people might have missed out on. Look okay, at bye, dudes. Look in my eyes. Bye-bye.